afternoon, everybody. Uh, I wanted to update you on our efforts here at the MTA uh, to continue to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. Let me just make one logistical point. On the phone are our colleague Sarah Feinberg, who's acting president of New York City Transit, Kathy Rinaldi, the president of Metro North, and Phil Eng, the president of the Long Island Railroad. Uh, they are here, uh, not here intentionally. Uh, they're either telecommuting or working uh, remotely, uh, but they will be available to uh, ask questions, and I just wanted to make that, make that note. The MTA is working around the clock to provide essential service to the heroes on the front lines of this pandemic crisis. Doctors, nurses, child care and grocery workers, transit workers, public utility employees, and so many more who are protecting and caring for and moving New York. The MTA has always been the lifeblood of the New York metropolitan region, but that has never been more true than today. I want to thank our more than 70,000 brave employees who continue to show up and deliver day in and day out. Our employees reported for duty after 9-11 and Superstorm Sandy, and they are at their posts again despite unprecedented challenges. As we continue to serve as the circulatory system of the region, we've been in consultation with the key groups that represent the essential personnel we're moving, some of the key groups. The Greater New York Hospital Association, Con Edison, National Grid, Transit Workers Union, and other unions, including Smart, Acre, the City of New York, and the State of New York. As you know, we've been continually evaluating service needs since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Our top priority continues to be to ensure these essential workers, first responders and others, can do their jobs. In consultation with these groups, we have made a decision today to implement what we are calling the MTA Essential Service Plan to ensure that that continues to happen. This reduced schedule preserves service for the heroes on the front lines of this crisis across New York City Transit, Long Island Railroad, and Metro North. As you know, as the pandemic has continued to intensify across New York, ridership has sunk to never before seen lows. Subway ridership down by a startling 87%, buses by more than 70%, Metro North by 94%, and the Long Island Railroad over 71%. The good news is that this reduction in ridership preserves social distancing for our customers and employees. Their safety is our highest priority. The steps we have taken in, in the last two or three weeks, and this, over the last two or three weeks, and the step we're taking today uh, has, uh, is intended to advance the governor's goals of flattening the curve of positive cases and slowing the spread of the virus. Buses will also be moving faster now that there are fewer cars on the road and, frankly, fewer passengers uh, getting on and off the bus. And we've taken steps to minimize contact and cash collections for our frontline employees, from implementing rear door boarding on buses to minimizing the collection of cash on railroads and in stations. We'll also continue with our intensified disinfecting protocols to keep our stations and rolling stock sanitized. Those moves have also been made after consultation with union leaders. I want to echo Governor Cuomo's message that most people should stay off mass transit. To be clear, if you don't need to go out, don't go out. If you don't need to travel, don't travel. This is a matter of public health. Staying in will help save lives. We all need to do our part to flatten the curve. To survive this international crisis, the MTA requires comprehensive, robust federal assistance. You're all aware of our request, urgent request, for at least $4 billion in federal grants. Congress is debating its latest relief package for the uh, coronavirus pandemic as we speak. We urge our elected officials in Washington to do the right thing and pass this bill, which includes $25 billion for transportation agencies across the country. Time is of the essence, and transit agencies, including the MTA, can't afford to wait any longer. We are in the midst of the biggest liquidity crisis ever as a result of a sudden drop in ridership as more people stay home. No organization of our size can rely on internal cuts alone to restore our operating budget. Extending our line of credit is not a long-term solution, and gutting our hard-fought capital plan is a non-starter. We won't allow this pandemic to slow efforts to bring the system into the 21st century. This is, to be clear, this is a national problem that requires a national solution. The MTA and our partners in mass transit nationwide are the circulatory system of this country. 
moving millions of people to school, work, medical appointments, and wherever else they need to go. We'll be there when this pandemic is over to propel the economy out of this crisis. We're not shutting down. We're not going anywhere. The MTA is the lifeblood of the New York economy. It's crucial that we're able to resume the tremendous progress we were seeing before the COVID-19 pandemic began. But for now, we will focus on the MTA essential service plan so essential workers can continue delivering for New York. Thank you. Stay safe. And now I'm going to turn it over to MTA Chief Operating Officer Mario Pelican. Mario. Thank you, Pat. I want to re reiterate that uh, we're not going anywhere. We'll continue to transport the essential workers who are keeping this city and our society functioning. And again, I'd like to acknowledge the brave transit workers who are on the front line of our operations during this pandemic. Your hard work and dedication does not go unnoticed. Now for the specifics of the MTA Essential Service Plan. On the subways, starting March 25th, lines will operate our MTA Essential Service Plan. Most customers won't notice a difference. This preserves our AM and PM peak to get first responders and essential personnel where they need to go. Some lines will not run Monday through Friday including the B, W, and Z lines. Also, some express service and branches on some lines will operate only local service. Even with these changes, the New York City Transit team continues to undertake a line-by-line, hour-by-hour analysis of ridership, so we're retra retaining flexibility to increase service as needed. The MTA Essential Service Plan for buses will start on March 26th. This plan retains 75% of normal bus operations, allows the MTA to serve essential workers and lessen crowding on transit and in crew facilities. This means that customers who still need to use buses for essential activities will continue to be accommodated. At the same time, the maximum number of buses needed is substantially reduced, requiring fewer operators and lessening crowding of depot facilities. Then on March 27th, the Long Island Railroad will ad adopt the new schedule, preserving 65% overall daily service. However, trains in the peak hour will continue to run. That's critically important to us. Crews and equipment will be on standby to supplement service if necessary. Also on March 27th, Metro North will implement the MTA Essential Service Plan while still providing hourly trains on the Harlem, Hudson, and New Haven lines, along with more frequent service during peak hours. On weekends, Metro North will follow a reduced schedule while also suspending shuttle service between Wasaic and Southeast on the Upper Harlem line. All service changes will be reflected on our website, the MyMTA app, and on countdown clocks at stations and on platforms. We appreciate your patience and understanding during this difficult time. Our number one goal is preserving the service for the heroes of, on the front lines of the crisis, and that's exactly what we're doing. Now over to Pat. Thank you, Mario. Um, as you know, we have rigorously intensified cleaning protocols across the system, disinfecting all stations and frequent touch points twice daily and our full fleet on a 72-hour cycle. All essential customers and employees are encouraged to continue practicing good hygiene and practicing social distancing where possible. While the system is safe, if you feel sick, stay home. It's, it's that simple. Just stay home, stop the spread. We are moving health care workers, first responders, and essential personnel. So it's vital that we all make the system as risk-free as possible. Let's do our, all do our part. Employee and customer health, pardon me. Employee and customer health and safety continue to be priority one. We are doing everything possible to keep our workforce safe. The over 70,000 brave men and women showing up to work every day. I want to thank them for their service because we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. 
I also wanted to update you on the precautions we are taking to keep them safe. And we're working closely with our labor leaders on all of these issues. Workstations are being disinfected aggressively and frequently. Hand sanitizer is available around all work locations. In order to protect vital, one-of-a-kind operation centers, we have deployed medical personnel to monitor the temperatures of these staffs in efforts to prevent symptomatic individuals from possibly contaminating others within these centers. Today, we are initiating a quick reaction team that we can uh, send to a location within the system where multiple employees are displaying symptoms, a hot spot location. The service changes announced today will help reduce workplace density and facilitate social distancing, including uh, in crew rooms and other facilities. We've instituted rear door uh, boarding on all of our buses, which began on Monday. Customers now board on all ex uh, on and exit all local and select bus service SBS buses using the rear doors. Express bus customers board as normal, but are not permitted to sit in the first three rows of the bus to ensure customers remain a safe social distance from our bus operators. Regular fare policy remains in effect wherever onboard payment boxes or SBS off-board ticket machines continue to be accessible. We have also announced that all cash transactions will be conducted by all Metro card vending machines, ticket vending machines, or e uh, MTA e-ticks. The new measure will reduce person-to-person -person contact and provide access to full cash uh, capabilities via Metro card vending machines, uh, ticket machines, and, and on our apps. For subways, reduced fare purchases, including those for senior citizens and ADA customers, continue at station booths. Thank you again. Uh, to our outstanding workforce who continue to show up and do their jobs every day, keeping the city, the city and the region running. Great. Uh, Pat, thanks. With that, we'll take questions. Pat, thanks. With that, we'll take questions. <clears throat> Christina. No, Christina first. Clayton, you're next. Um, just to clarify, so you're going to be running on around a Saturday schedule, which is about a 30% reduction in service for subways Monday through Friday. Is that accurate? Or what percentage change would you say we'll be seeing? Um, for, for subways, uh, we're going to be running about 75% of the normal service. Uh, so it's a, it's a reduction, uh, but we're, we're trying to preserve good service for the first responders and the emergency people as much as possible. Okay, and do we have an update on how many MTA workers have tested positive for the virus? Yes, 52. 52, and how many others are out but haven't gotten tested yet? I, I don't have that number at my fingertips, but obviously it's, uh, uh, it's greater than 52. Okay, and are you planning on rolling out further testing for MTA workers? I know that's been a point of contention. Look, here's what we've done. Uh, the CDC and the Department of Health, state and city have created protocols. There's a shortage of testing, as you know. Uh, Governor Cuomo has taken actions to raise the level of testing from a very low level to 16,000 a day in New York State. Unfortunately, and how this happened in the United States of America in 2020 is a question for a congressional investigation. Uh, but there simply is not t testing materials for everybody that wants it. So what, we're, what we've done at every step through this process is look to medical doctors and public health people, CDC, uh, state health, city health, and our own people, medical doctors and public health. And, and last quick thing, are you concerned sure. about overcrowding if you're running fewer trains with more essential workers, you know, on? So, no. Um, here's one way to think about it, right? Subways uh, down 87 percent. Uh, the Lexington Avenue line, just to pick one, down 88 percent. So it's kind of tracking. It's slightly higher. And we're serving 13 percent of the, uh, of the customers that existed four weeks ago before this occurred. Uh, we uh, believe that, and, and uh, one of the reasons that we waited uh, to do this was we've been constantly evaluating it and assessing it. And if you look back a week ago, for instance, subway ridership was down about 52 percent and bus ridership was down approximately 35. We did not think that at that point in time that it was responsible in terms of social distancing to make the MTA essential service changes that we're talking about today. Uh, Clayton. Um, the rider, drop in ridership numbers that you just reported, uh, what day were those for? Let's start with that. Uh, the, well, so two dates. The 52 and 35 was, uh, was a week ago. 
the uh, 87 and uh, 70 percent, 87 subways uh, buses was yesterday. Okay. Um, do you have have you do you have a number that you can share with us about how many uh, trains have been delayed or canceled because you've just had a workforce shortage in the past week? Uh, I'm, I'm going to refer that one to uh, Sarah Feinberg. Yeah, I think the I think the latest number I saw was was more than 800 delays as of this morning. That was just this morning uh, because of crew shortages. So it's a it's a significant issue, and it's one of the it's one of the main reasons why we're taking this step now. And how are you monitoring crowding in real time? Um, are you looking at uh, are you able to look at real time turnstile data to see if anything because if any hotspot does pop up that where you're not running enough trains that you might have overcrowding on trains and buses? So, so Clayton, I, I asked. Uh, well, uh, Sarah, why, why don't why don't you report on that? You, you and I discussed yeah. this earlier. Yeah, I'm happy to. I mean, look, we get reports in real time about crowding, um, and and we have not received any reports about crowding on the subways in the last several days. Um, We've, we've gotten a couple reports here and there on buses, and we're watching that, that very closely. So, for example, we got some reports that some of the buses servicing the Amazon warehouse uh, were experiencing some crowding conditions, uh, reportedly because they've added some workers. And so we're going to add some buses to that, to, that, um, to that route. Do you have a target figure for what your load capacity is for each train? I, it normally, it's closer to 100%. What is the target now with these new social distance guidelines in place? Uh, Sarah, do you want to go that we've put a, yeah. yeah, I don't know that we've put a specific number on it. I mean, I will tell you, I've been in the system every day over the last two weeks, and I don't think I've been on a car where there's been, there's been more than you know, six or eight people. Um, so um, that doesn't mean that's the ideal number. Certainly a lot of cars are more crowded than that. Some trains are more crowded than that. I don't think we've got a specific number on it, but it's, you know, the, the drop-off has been palpable. And then just a couple more, bear with me. Um, have, have you taken any thought or modeling, uh, done any modeling when it comes to the potential of shutting down stations? They did it in London. They shut down 40 stations to help reduce usage and crowding. Has there been any thinking on those lines? Uh, we have no plans to shut down stations, period, and we've not got, we have no plans to shut down service, uh, period, period, as well. And I'll, let, let me just, I'm going to go to someone else in a second. I, I just want to make this point, right? We're, on the subways, we're serving 13% of, of a normal, uh, a month ago, pre-pandemic, and we're providing 75% service, right, for subways and buses. We, we think that crowding in, in that uh, environment uh, is, is very unlikely. Anybody else? <clears throat> I just get one more in, Pat. We'll come back to you, Clayton. Any, anybody else? Please. Uh, there's a video of a packed four train from this morning. Uh, how does a reduction in service address issues like that? I know you just touched on it right there, but what's the protocol for dealing with overcrowding when you see? Well, look, uh, that, that question uh, seems to have come across the, the Hudson. Um, the, uh, uh, the comment I'd make would be uh, we didn't uh, experience or uh, see any crowding today. Whether that video, which I, I haven't seen at least, uh, was taken today or at some other point, uh, unclear to us. Uh, and as Sarah Feinberg said a minute ago, we haven't seen we haven't seen crowding on subway or buses, which is not surprising given the precipitous decline in ridership. I, I, if we see it, we, we will act. Uh, and uh, I, I do think that, you know, given the fact we're serving 13 percent of the customers and providing 75 percent service with more service in, in, in the peak, uh, I, I, I think we will achieve a couple of goals. One is moving first responders around, but also maintaining social distance and helping s stop the spread of the virus. Anybody else? <clears throat> Clayton. Um, uh, I noticed in the board books you guys amended some of the uh, trans Office of Transformation contracts. Um, to say that they can be paused or terminated if they're affected by the COVID-19 outbreak. Where does that process stand? Are you guys putting a pause on it? Are you still moving forward? And what is that office doing now, given the circumstances have changed? Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, the board is going to consider those agreements tomorrow. Uh, we uh, will not move forward with transformation activities until the crisis is over. Uh, I, I hope that's a short period of time, but obviously uh, none of us knows. But that's the answer. And um, are we, can we, hang, hang on a second, Any, anybody else? There's, I'm getting questions from other reporters too. I, I yeah. got it, Christina. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, next time Clayton, we can just call, you can do a call with Clayton. Let's do last question, last question. 
Well, one from Christina, one from Clayton. I just want to ask, so some advocates have said that $4 billion is... Christina, great. this your question or someone else's? Indeed, my question. Okay, fine, good. Um, so you should give Clayton to you after me. Um, so that $4 billion is going to be a minimum of what the MTA actually needs uh, moving forward. What do you think is the worst case scenario in terms of the kind of you know, like federal funds the MTA will need if this extends beyond that six-month period that you're modeling the $3.7 billion off of? Look, uh, we are uh, hopeful and expecting to get $4 billion dollars uh, our needs, uh, depending on how long this goes and how long the precipitous ridership declines uh, continue, as well as what effect the economic situation has on the various subsidies we get that have been uh, passed into state law, th th there's, no, there's no certainty on that. Uh, we, uh, you know, we plan for disruption, but not disruption on, on this basis with a global pa pandemic that has shut down, in effect, the largest economy uh, in, in the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we drew down a billion dollars on a line of credit uh, uh, yesterday that was put in place some time ago. Uh, it was prudent planning then. We were happy to, uh, uh, to draw it. We're taking uh, other steps. Uh, but the, uh, the, the worst case, I, I, I can't imagine, the, the worst case um, is uh, unthinkable. Clayton. How much do you expect the service reduction plan to save the agency? And do you have any message to riders who are still kind of flouting your guidelines and kind of using it, just going about their day-to-day -day and not really changing the behavior? Well, look, uh, so he, here's my experience. Well, let's talk about empirical data first. Uh, it's down 87 percent. So I think most people are taking the governor's direction and advice not to ride the subways. Uh, it wouldn't be surprising if there were continued declines as the pandemic uh, continues, uh, kind of point one. Uh, point two, uh, I, I think that um, we are providing a uh, significant level of service for 13 percent of our customers in a pre-pandemic world. Uh, that seems, and I think not doing this earlier, given the numbers that I cited about a week ago, you know, 52 percent decline uh, on subways, I, I think we've acted responsibly. To, to answer directly your question, uh, there, there will be savings. That's not what is driving this. Uh, uh, clearly, and I, I don't have a number at my fingertips, I will say this, that in terms of the billions and billions of de dollars of deficit that we face because of the ridership decline and the uh, decline in subsidies, uh, those numbers, uh, we want to save every dollar we can, those numbers are not going to make a material difference. And, and, and our primary goal is to continue to provide service, especially to first responders, including transit workers, who are critical to the city and region's uh, recovery. That's what this is about. Thanks, everybody. Stay well.